Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another AppSet Insight webinar. My name is Jackie, and I'm one of the nurse educators here from Insight. And before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners and the custodians of the land and pay my respect to elders past, present, and emerging. I would also like to extend that respect to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders um, who might be joining us today. So today it gives me a great pleasure to introduce a friend of mine and a working colleague, Dr. Nicola Ogninovitz, and who will be talking about ketamine for the treatment of addictions and mental health. So Dr. Nicola is an um, addiction medicine doctor who is currently working at Biala as well as West Morton Drug and Alcohol Service. And then he has a particular interest in exploring of the novel of, um, approaches to addiction treatment. So he has actually done a few presentation here with us and talking about um, psychedelic science and the Ibo game. So really um, great information. Um, if you are keen and they are recorded on our Inside YouTube channel. So without further ado, and then everyone, please welcome Dr. Nicola. Welcome everyone who is taking the time to be online for this presentation. Um, I um, also would like to acknowledge the, uh, the spirits of this land and, uh, and help us to, um, to get things up and going as soon as we can to help our, um, our patients. I also would like to acknowledge the people who, who suffer with mental health disorders and, uh, and currently need uh, probably some more options to get better. So uh, talking about ketamine, why are we talking about ketamine? It is um, a, a, a substance that um, has been used in medicine for quite a while. And now it's started to move into uh, mental health and, and addiction treatments. Um, it is a, um, a substance that is uh, by some considered a psychedelic, by others not really. Uh, but in, in my view, it definitely has very similar effects as the classic psychedelic substances. So, Ketamine. It was synthesized in 1962, quite a while ago, and uh, it first gained a good reputation when it was used as a field anesthetic in the Vietnam War. Uh, it became very popular because it was much safer to use than, uh, than other field uh, anesthetics and pain relief, particularly opioids. Uh, if you overdose on opioids, you, you, you create a, a bigger problem. Um, so, um, ketamine as an anesthetic uh, was has been used with with a very good uh, track record. Um, I have used ketamine as an anesthetic in my um, in my practice. I used to work in the country uh, for about twenty years in uh, mainly country um, uh, hospitals. Um, and um, doing emergency medicine, and I used to uh, I, I used it in hundreds of people, and and I developed great uh, uh, appreciation for ketamine because of its very safe use and very easy use in those settings. Um, it's also used in pain medicine now. Um, it, it has a reputation of preventing opioid-induced hyperalgesia. Um, it, it also is used in uh, uh, chronic regional pain syndromes um, by, by uh, pain medicine specialists. Uh, in emergency medicine, I already mentioned uh, the, the use for procedures and, and, and anesthesia, but uh, it's also used in, uh, in a mental health setting in acute behavior disturbance, uh, again, because of its safety. Now, it started to be used in, in some jurisdictions in the US uh, for acute suicidal states. Uh, they're giving ketamine infusion and um, uh, ketamine infusion will have quite a dramatic effect, but it's quite short lived. But I mean, if, if you, if you um, 
get someone out of its uh, deep suicidal state for a day or two, which probably how long it will last, uh, at least they give some a window of time and things can change. So um, I think it is a very good uh, way of, 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 of using. Uh, in neurologists, Neurology, um, uh, some neurologists use it in functional neurological syndro syndromes and in mental health, um, it is becoming quite widespread, especially in the US to use in treatment resistant depression, PTSD, complex trauma, and some other mental health disorders. Um, in addiction medicine, Again, it, it has had a history. Uh, I will mention later on, there have been studies um, uh, which from mainly from other countries, again, um, big studies from, from, from Russia were proving its efficacy in like alcohol and opioid use disorder. So as I said, uh, ketamine is something that has a bit of a reputation as well. Uh, quite a bit of stigma attached to it because it also is used in some recreational settings and um, because it is used, for instance, in veterinary medicine. And exactly because of its safety, um, you can uh, imagine when you anesthetize a horse, for instance, um, it, it would need some very substantial uh, uh, equipment, an aesthetic machine, and all other things to keep the horse safe during a procedure. So yes, ketamine is a horse tranquilizer because it works and it keeps the horse safe and you can do a procedure under anesthesia uh, in, in reasonably uh, limited uh, resources. Um, another story with ketamine, when um, uh, these uh, boys from uh, in Thailand got trapped in the cave. Remember, um, they were a football team who, who, who went to see a cave and then there was a, a flash flood flooding and they trapped them inside. And they were there for, um, for quite a while, I think about 10 plus days. And um, there was an international effort to, to bring them out of that cave because it was basically flooded in so I had to bring them out underwater. And um, it was actually Australian anesthetists involved in there. And the drug that they used for these boys was ketamine. Uh, because, you know, again, ketamine doesn't stop people breathing while they're anesthetized. So they could be fully anesthetized, put underwater and safely extracted from that situation. So, I think um, this is why the World Health Organization uh, uh, has ketamine listed on its essential medicine list uh, since 1985, despite some attempts, uh, some countries trying to get it off, namely China tried it, um, uh, because of its other mental health and psychedelic effects. Um, but um they 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 didn't manage to do that so it is widely used especially in in the third world for for anesthetics where you've got very limited resources you can do a cesarean section uh in a in a health center without you know uh, an anesthetic machine on ketamine so recently we we have seen quite an upsurge in uh, in ketamine research uh, mainly in mental health. Uh, this is a statistic that a, um, a, a colleague of mine uh, created. So it, it, there's plenty of studies now. Uh, there's some Australian uh, studies as well, um, American studies. If you would like to, um, uh, to have access to them, I'm happy to help you. Um, there was a study just recently, uh, it's unfortunately not finished in the UK for ketamine for alcohol use disorder. And um, as a result of that, the UK actually opened a few ketamine centers for treatment. So 
back to what ketamine does. So for, for uh, the medicals who are interested in, you know, um, uh, the physiology of ketamine, just a, a few words of how it works. So it, it is modulating NMDA receptors in the brain, which will have an effect on the actions of glutamate, which is the main excitatory uh, uh, neurotransmitter in the brain. Uh, it also works through the AMPA receptors, uh, modulating glutamate. But, and, and, and this effect makes ketamine very unique in, in the use of mental health because none of the other uh, psychotropic medication works through these pathways. Um, most of them work through, uh, you know, dopamine, serotonin, noradrenaline pathways. Um, at a lesser extent, ketamine has an effect on opioid uh, receptors. And in fact, there was a study um, uh, showing that if you give an, an, an opioid blocker like naloxone, that it somewhat uh, uh, blocks the effects of ketamine, but it was not really confirmed. So even though it has an effect, that's not the primary effect of ketamine. Also works on dopamine to some extent. Serotonin uh, 5H2A, uh, some effect as well, which is the classic psychedelic uh, medicines uh, main uh, pathway, uh, but also works on cannabinoid uh, receptors. It inhibits mayo A and mayo B uh, enzymes and increases GABA and seroplasmin and endorphin levels. When you put someone uh, on the ketamine, you, you, you put uh, on the EEG probes, uh, you will see that uh, ketamine, under the effect of ketamine, uh, the um, delta and theta activity will increase in the brain in basically all regions, which is very similar to, to what happens in like deep meditation. And what is a very important effect that um, is, is also mentioned in the literature quite a bit, that it activates the interaction between the prefrontal cortex, uh, which is the place of cognitive processing and, and uh, keeping basically us uh, in control of our, our actions, overriding, uh, being able to override and, and, and select what we're doing and what we're not doing. And the limbic system, which is the place for uh, emotions, uh, motivations, memory, and, and, and the, the subconscious experiences. So what happens people, it, people who, who are under chronic stress and, uh, and, and under the effects of um, long-standing trauma, quite often you see in, in MRIs uh, that their frontal cortex actually shrinks and uh, the connections between the two systems are blocked. So you, you, the, the, the communication between your reasoning and your emotions is not happening, um, which means that, that it's actually bogged down. So you, you won't be able to process uh, uh, those, those uh, emotions and they will affect your mental health. So, the other thing that ketamine has proven to do is it increases uh, brain-derived neurogenic factor and the expression of that in, and, and signaling in the brain, which means it, it facilitates brain regeneration and growth, new brain cells to, 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 to develop and activate, apart from the new connections that I mentioned before. So it, it also has some data that it limits and prevents neuroinflammation, which is, uh, again, a new area of, uh, of, of research in mental health, that inflammatory cells increase in, in, in mental health disorders. And if we, if we, if we treat inflammation in the brain, in the neuroglia, uh, then it, it has a beneficial effect. Um, so ketamine also modulates gene expression, and which is involved in, uh, in this circadian rhythm. And uh, there was a recent study that showed, uh, from Sweden actually, that showed that uh, it increased the number of serotonin 1B receptors in the brain. 
So this is a study that a lot of ketamine doctors will, um, will show you and have them on their website, um, which was you know, uh, published quite a while ago, which showed that it is actually on rats, it's not human. Um, it increased uh, dendritic uh, uh, budding. So it increased the numbers of, of dendritic processes uh, on a neuron. Um, and um, the other one I'm going to show you is the, um, uh, the um, uh, functional MRI that shows how the um, serotonin uh, 1B receptors increased in, in, uh, in the hippocampus. Um, so how does ketamine and, and other psychedelic medicines uh, work in substance use disorders? Um, they have an antidepressant effect. They increase connectivity in the brain. Um, they contribute uh, with their effects of healing uh, the effects of trauma, which as an addiction specialist, I always say I can't remember one client when I scratched the surface in their history who did not have a background of trauma somewhere in, in the past. It also enhances neuroplasticity, brain growth, and, and uh, 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 expression of uh, brain-derived neurogenic factor, uh, decreases neuroinflammation, and direct, some direct effects on, on opioid receptors. Uh, for instance, in my previous talk, I, I talked about ibogaine. Now, there's a, another issue here that, which is still quite a bit controversial. Um, some studies, especially uh, the uh, psilocybin uh, studies at John Hopkins University, uh, correlated the efficacy of ibogaine with the level of mystical experience that the participants had, uh, which we already had uh, some previous um, knowledge that epiphanies do help to get over uh, addictive behavior. Uh, uh, Doc Selman's uh, points in, uh, in uh, the, the, the basic uh, uh, contributing factors in successful um, uh, uh, addiction treatment uh, lists epiphanies as, as, as one of the essential parts. So ketamine psychotherapy in alcoholism has been studied uh, by uh, Krupitsky in 97 and had very good results. Now this trial uh, was controlled but not randomized and uh, it, they gave actually quite high dose ketamine, they gave the psychedelic dose of ketamine. So I will get back to it, what it means. Um, so it, about uh, more, than, more than double the effect of conventional treatment uh, compared in, in, in their study. Uh, also in opioid addiction, they had very good results with that. Now, another recent uh, um, development with ketamine that um, um, the Therapeutic Goods Administration um, approved S-ketamine, which is a product of uh, a drug company, Jensen, uh, in mental health use in Australia. It, it, it was in March this year. In the US, it, it was a, had been approved for a, another year before. Now, this is basically ketamine uh, separated uh, in the spatial orientation. So basically the same compound, uh, ketamine, normal ketamine has got a mix of right and left spatial orientation of the molecule. Now, this drug company separated the left orientation from the right orientation and patented the drug and claimed that it had uh, somewhat different effects. Um, now, it at the moment is getting rolled out in Australia. Um, it, it has been used in some centers. It comes in a nasal spray and um, it is um, need, it needs to be used under medical supervision. You cannot take it home. Uh, you have to stay there for two hours, and um, you just 
be observed, watch videos, whatever you feel like doing. Uh, it is getting titrated to effect. And um, th there are effects that you, there are unwanted effects that they, they don't want to achieve. And then you get it once a week, twice a week for a, a period of time. Now in the US, it was it, very expensive. I'm not sure about the price here. It was like uh, 600 US dollars for one treatment. And you need like one or two a week. So it's the dosing regime for, for it. So I already mentioned that I, I deem ketamine as a psychedelic drug. It's not a classic psychedelic drug, but it definitely has psychedelic effects. Um, so what is psychedelic therapy? Um, at the moment, there's a lot of media, um, media programs that mention it, articles, uh, even you know, series, um, a TV series like The Nine Perfect Strangers. Um, there's a lot of popularization and, and mentioning that psychedelic substances may benefit uh, mental health disorders. But unfortunately, it comes with quite a lot of uh, caveats and dangers. Um, I just would like to... Um, um, clarify how these substances are used or can be used. So when you use these substances in a, in a small dose, uh, then you use it as a pharmaceutical uh, agent. If you increase the dose, then it's, it starts having mind altering effects. And depending on how much you increase the dose, it's gonna have more deep and deeper uh, mind altering effects. So let's go into the details. So the biochemical or pharmaceutical framework for uh, using these substances, including ketamine, psilocybin, and others. Um, when you give a dose that you titrate to cause no mind-altering uh, mind effects, uh, and then you give that, uh, give that dose say every second day, every third day, twice a week, there are different dosing regimes. And uh, you will, uh, you might notice some uh, help in, in your mental health. Now this is commonly called microdosing, these medicines. Uh, in the case of ketamine, it's normally in this uh, fashion, it's dosed uh, with lozenges or troches, uh, either sublingual or oral, if you swallow it, um, but also in infusions. So the um, uh, American uh, Psychiatric Association endorsed a regime for ketamine infusion, uh, where it's half a, half a milligram per kilogram over 40 minutes. Now, in most, most people, it will not cause major effects uh, mentally, uh, mind-altering uh, or psychedelic effects, but there will be a small subset of people who are more sensitive to it, and, and, and they will have some dissociation and, and uh, surprising unwanted side effects. Um, so, I mean, yeah, this is the same use of a substance or a psychedelic substance as giving any other uh, medication, psychotropic medication, just maybe a little bit different dosing regime. Um, and some people claim that when they have psycho, uh, it helps the psychotherapeutic process, but it is applied outside the use of, of, of the uh, ketamine dose. So this is uh, how ketamine troches look like. Um, it was first developed by a psychiatrist who is actually Australian, Dr. Stephen Hyde in Tasmania. And um, um, it got very popular in the US. It's, it's been developed for over 10 years uh, and it's only just started to, to be used in Australia. So uh, Stephen is much better known for his for his achievement in the US than in Australia. So 
just to mention that there was a uh, that there is a psychiatrist in Brisbane who presented at on Insight before, uh, Angelo Di Giovannis, who treated hundreds of people uh, with the pharmaceutical way of ketamine or with oral ketamine, and there was a study uh, published uh, in two thousand and eighteen with a, um, a, a survey of, of, of uh, the results, the treatment results of patients. And what they examined is the, um, uh, the patient hospitalization, which was proven to reduce quite significantly. We're talking about treatment resistant depression where people uh, spend uh, months in hospital a year and, and being on multiple medications, not responding to them. That's another picture about, it is also the pharmaceutical way. <coughs> I just put it up to, sh to show that it is very clinical. Just giving an infusion, they still might put you know, music on to help the patient relax. Uh, and they just sit in a bed getting the infusion. Now, the second way of using these substances is the psycholytic or empathogenic framework. Now, this is a framework which does not result in a full psychedelic effect. So people are still uh, connected with reality and connected with the therapist, but they open up their defenses, they reduce their fear response, um, they, it increases, uh, their empathy towards themselves. So it works as a lubricant uh, in the psychotherapy session um, to go deeper, to access uh, the personal subconscious, for instance, and being able to express traumatic experiences and process them without an overwhelming fear response happening. So it's just a quote from the trainings I did, uh, which I really like mentioning. So they say, you have to feel your fear. It is not that the fear goes away. It is that you are able to trust your fear. So yes, fear is, fear is a normal uh, human emotion, which protected us from uh, uh, experience, uh, protected us from danger over our evolution. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It, it's a bad thing when it's there, when it, when it doesn't serve a purpose. And that's what happens with a lot of mental health conditions. And if you are able to go back to just trust that fear when you need to have fear, uh, it will definitely change something in you. So in, in this framework, there's also, a, if, if you're familiar with psychodynamic uh, processes, the phenomena of projection, transference, and counter-transference are common, uh, as in uh, the psychodynamic therapies. And they're actually welcome and, and, and used in the therapeutic process, as in, in those uh, therapeutic settings. Now, the length of this session with the psycholytic use is about two to three hours with ketamine, uh, but uh, the research with MDMA and psilocybin uh, shows us they take much longer, five to six hours. Now, this framework, if you read up on what happens in MDMA research, is exactly what they're aiming for. So that's what is used in, 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 in those settings with MDMA. MDMA is not a full psychedelic, so very few people will get a, 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 a separation from reality with MDMA, but they have a very strong empathetic experience, empathogenic experience. And this is what it looks like when you use this in this setting. So it looks like it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a room that is made friendly, looks homely, makes the client comfortable and safe, with in research setting with two therapists, a male and a female for a good reason. Um, here's another one, <clears throat> uh, 
these are these people, the previous one and ones, and these two are uh, the leading uh, researchers in MDMA studies in the US. So, and finally, we came to uh, the psychedelic framework. Um, so this is when the dose is high enough to help the client enter in a deep altered state uh, and ends up losing connection with, with reality. Um, again, uh, it will facilitate connection and emergence of subconscious contents and memories in many cases. Uh, accessing the collective unconscious uh, and uh, often results in identity dissolution, experience the self without the hangups of, uh, of, of, of what it developed uh, and, and, and possibly developed with maladaptive um, uh, patterns. Um, it often results in, in changing the perspective on, on the self and worldview. Uh, it, it, with ketamine, it lasts about one to one and a half hours uh, with a, an emergence that goes through a phase that was mentioned before the psychedelic, uh, with a, a, a psycholytic or the empathogenic phase when the patient becomes accessible for himself and the therapist. Now, this is classically this framework used in the psilocybin research studies that um, uh, happened quite a few of them in the US, but there are a couple of psilocybin studies and there's one already started in, uh, in, in Melbourne and there's two more just in the pipeline. One, one was started for um, end of life um, uh, states in, in, a, in, a, uh, in a hospital, um, uh, St. Vincent's Hospital in Melbourne. Uh, the, uh, and um, there's another one just starting up for general anxiety disorder. Uh, there is also one planned in Sydney using uh, psilocybin for methamphetamine use disorder, which will be even more exciting for us addiction specialists. So what's the therapist role in, in psychedelic therapies? I think it's important to mention because and I think there's a few people in the audience who, who, who are counselors and therapists. Uh, and um, it is somewhat different uh, to your normal uh, behavior-based uh, psychotherapeutic processes. Um, primarily because it is, uh, using the old terminology, it is a psychodynamic process. So what is uh, always mentioned in, in these therapies that you, you we are supporting the client's own inner healing process and not giving directions of what to do and, and how to heal. Um, and we actually trying to enhance those processes and encourage the client to, to, to own those processes and, and not to run away from them. So it, it, it happens by providing safety and assurance that uh, when they explore their experiences, they can trust them. Um, so it is also when, when, it, when they emerge, uh, they trying to facilitate the validation of these difficult and painful contexts. Um, providing opportunities uh, to allow the clients um, transference. For instance, you know, a lot of, a lot of people have developed mental trauma where there was a, a missing or, or or more that they had no supportive people, supporting people or supporting parents uh, in, in their uh, 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 development as a child. And um, quite often they uh, project uh, that role in, to the therapist and that the therapist somewhat has to embrace that and provide that safety uh, and, uh, and that connection with, with the client to, to have a, a, a corrective experience. And uh, uh, finally, uh, you need to ensure that physical and psychological safety is maintained. So yet yeah, when there are strong emotions coming up and could be something physical 
uh, occurring, you need to to make sure that 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 the that safety is maintained. Uh, and finally, helping uh, with the integration of these, uh, these new experiences is absolutely essential. So there's a lot, of, a lot of treatments happening at the moment. And because of the popularization of these substances, there's more and more underground uh, providers uh, started to give uh, these substances. But what happens, uh, one, there is, they don't select the clients very well. And once they had the experience, they just go home and very little support is provided. Um, so um, we started to see some psychedelic casualties from these settings. Oops, I don't know what happened here. Um, so, Going back to ketamine, um, it, it has got some known adverse effects, but there's a lot of them <coughs> that are not really known by professionals of, of, of where and how it happens, because it's mentioned in, in some texts and, and literature. It doesn't mean that everyone who uses ketamine would end up with a terrible adverse effects. So um, we know that in very high and regular users, they can have um, damage to their um, bladder, um, the sterile interstitial ulcerative cystitis. It can be serious, very serious. Um, there is some experience, anecdotal uh, experience where the, um, uh, the patient had to have their, um, their bladder removed even. But again, uh, only in very high dues, high and regular use. Um, now, the second side effect that's quoted is this psychotomimetic, which, is, uh, which means that it mimics psychosis. So mimicking psychosis um, is, a, again, a, a very limited um, way of, of describing what happens. Uh, people do not stay in that state. So they will not uh, develop psychosis. They will have a, a dissolving uh, state of mind or a, a state of mind that's more ex accessing and new experiences, which can be uh, alerting, um, but it is only transient. And uh, it is, as some studies showed, is actually in some studies, proven it's essential to have a good effect. So in Anastasia, it has been called emergence delirium. And uh, sometimes they, they give benzodiazepines with ketamine to try to avoid it. When I used ketamine in, in emergency medicine, I basically prepared the patients uh, that things like this can happen. And I never had one uh, real adverse reaction like that. Uh, treating hundreds. Um, so it's always transient. And there, is there are no documented cases that ketamine has ever caused psychosis. And as I said, the mystical experience is associated with better outcome in psilocybin studies. Now, it will also cause anxiety and agitation. Anything that is new and emerging from the psyche is potentially can be distressing. But if, if the client is properly prepared and, and supported in the setting when it happens, it's much less likely to happen. So I put this up whenever I talk about these substances. Um, this is a, um, uh, the drug harms in the UK uh, uh, study that was um, published in the Lancet. Um, it was interviewing um, uh, 100 drug experts uh, around the world, and they all had to rate uh, the harm caused by these substances. And 
harm to others and harm to users. And as we expected, the substance that's readily available and you can just make a phone call and it gets delivered to your house comes up on top. Uh, and then others like heroin, methamphetamine in, it comes close by. And the substances we're talking about, like psilocybin uh, or ketamine, are way lower in, in the harm that they can actually cause by, it is world experts, they're not underground people who, 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 who scored these substances. And the same in Australia, it was again repeated in the Australian Drug Harms Ranking Study uh, in 2018, uh, the 25 experts were invited to give scoring and very, very similar results. Um, I would like to, um, to um, um, quote this from Ram Das. Again, going back to what happens in a psychedelic setting. Um, if we can give up attachment to our roles as helpers, then maybe our clients can give up attachment to their roles as patients, and we can meet as fellow souls on this incredible journey. We can fulfill the duties of our roles without being trapped by over-identification with them. So in this setting, it's more like a partnership in healing than being the expert who will tell the client what to do and how to get better. Um, and um, thank you for your attention. And uh, if you would like some more uh, information on, uh, on these subjects, I'm very happy to, um, to help you. You can contact me on my email address. Thank you, Doc. That's very... Um interesting and we've actually got a, quite a few um, questions here so one of the question was about if there's any approved trainings for becoming a prescriber um, for the psychedelic medica uh, meds medications um, in Australia at the moment um, it is not approved by by any colleges or um, um, or bodies, professional bodies, to apply these substances in in so-called psychedelic uh, psychotherapy. Um, there is research coming up. Um, I'm part of a research project, uh, MDMA assisted psychotherapy, through Monash University. Uh, and as I mentioned, there are a few other research projects uh, in the pipeline. Um, ketamine can be used in this fashion, but no one is going to protect you if, if there is anything happens to you and, and you, you, you used it in this fashion. Um, unfortunately, it is just an emerging field and there is no governance, there is no... Um, commonly accepted standards and guidelines of, of how to use these substances. So a number of people, including myself, we are working on, on, on establishing a, um, a body with uh, you know, professionals who can come together and create and create an organization which can then provide these guidelines uh, and some type of, uh, you know, uh, approved uh, training. But at the moment, there is no uh, such thing that there is no training that would, that you just uh, go and, and you will become a, um, a well-prepared psychedelic psychotherapist. Um, and you won't be able to use these substances. I mean, uh, MDMA and psilocybin uh, are still uh, prohibited substances. There has been a, a submission by a number of professionals to reschedule it, and um, it's still not final. Um, the outcome from the TGA, uh, there was an expert panel 
which had um, some partial recommendations to to reschedule uh, these substances, uh, but it's still not final. So, uh, what what I think, uh, if if there is a chance that you can get into a research project and then work that way, unfortunately, uh, uh, there is no common uh, uh, opportunities in Australia. In the US, you can go and attend um, courses. Like I myself uh, went to the US a number of times. Um, I did uh, a course on uh, on um, uh, ketamine assisted psychotherapy um, and, and and that was quite good it was actually experiential so I, I, I got to experience ketamine myself um, I think Australia is very far from that um, in my estimation it's probably be lagging about 10 years behind the US Thank you doc for the thorough explanation and I've got another um, question here that what are some of the most um, in, um, important selection criteria for you that you know you would consider to put um, clients or patients on the treatment for ketamine? Yes. Now, thank you for reminding me. I um, I, I also would like to say, and um, somehow a slide must have got missed. Um, there are four essential criteria for any psychedelic therapy. So the patient selection, as you mentioned, and I will, I will get back to it, um, is essential. These substances are not to be used on everyone. Um, on very severe cases, uh, as I mentioned, even here in, in, in Brisbane, um, low doses of ketamine has been used and it had some partial results on treatment resistant depression. Um, so, but that definitely did not have any deeper psychological effects as such, but lifted depression somewhat and reduced hospitalization as, as I showed on that uh, uh, research study. Um, if you think about giving someone a mind altering dose of any of these substances, then you're going on to, going on to some um, area which is really need to be more carefully considered, whether that client is ready for that state. Uh, people who are, for instance, psychotic, people who don't have ego defenses, people who have severe personality disorders, uh, I would never consider giving uh, these substances at that level. Um, there are some other exclusion criteria, which I will get back to for ketamine. Now, once you selected the patient who you think will be suitable um, to, um, to undergo this type of treatment, because you think they have the resources to, to be safe in that setting, um, then you need to do some preparation. And the preparation will have to detail what can happen, all the possible effects that can happen in this setting and go through them and maybe um, uh, explore their resources, their psychological resources, whether they, they have techniques of grounding, uh, mindfulness, um, others that they, they already have developed in themselves. And if they haven't, then you can facilitate that before you go to the psychedelic doses. Now, once you have the preparation done, then you have the psychedelic session, which you know, in this uh, area, in this field is always said, the set and setting and the drug. So the set is, the client's intention, their mind at that any given time. So even if they were suitable at a previous time, they might something might have happened and they're not suitable uh, at the current time when they uh, uh, scheduled to go into therapy. 
So that has to be considered. The setting is what I showed is, is, is whatever comes outside the client. Uh, the environment, the therapist, the therapist's uh, presence and attitude is part of that. And then the drug. So the drug again comes which drug, which substance that you choose, uh, at slightly different uh, qualities can be targeted towards what result you wanna, you wanna uh, achieve. And then the dose of that medicine. Uh, as I said, very important, the more you give, the more deeper the effect will go. And, and, and the more you can go into, you know, causing um, states which are, can be unwanted. Um, and then the last one, which again, very often gets uh, left out, especially in underground therapy is the integration. And, and that's probably uh, one that, that is the hardest on the, on the part of the therapist, because once someone's in a therapeutic session with the medicine, things can get you know, uh, easier, more em empathy coming out, more connection coming out. But when you come back to uh, uh, addressing those experiences in the normal mindset, um it you need to you need to be able to 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 tease out and and address again ego defenses without the help of medicines um but it's quite often uh, already bubbling up so going back to um and and integration sessions might take a long time it might take you know weeks and months before the next session is due uh, if there's an experience that needs to be integrated, uh, it can take a while, quite often, to, to have that done, to bring it down into the current situation, the current uh, context of the client's life. Now, uh, and then how many sessions? Again, it's individual. Now, how do you select uh, patients for, for ketamine? So there are some physical exclusions. For instance, untreated, uh, unstable thyroid uh, uh, disease, um, um, unstable high blood pressure because ketamine um, actually uh, increases blood pressure about 25% uh, in the session. Um, um, with someone who's got um, unstable coronary artery disease, um, it's not recommended. Um, uh, increased intracranial pressure, uh, high pressure hydrocephalus, who someone, again, who is not pro properly treated. Uh, glaucoma, intra intraocular pressure can increase with ketamine. Um, um, decompensated liver disease. Ketamine is mainly uh, metabolized through the, the liver. So it's uh, unpredictable uh, what dose they get if, if, if you don't know the, the rate of metabolism. Um, what else? Uh, other medications. So again, it is controversial uh, the first practitioner to practitioner of what is considered as a, a interaction. I myself don't like getting clients uh, who, um, who come with polypharmacy because all their receptors are covered and, and ketamine won't have a chance to, um, to, 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 to lodge anyway. Um, there are medications like lemotrigin that is considered to block the ketamine effect. But ketamine again is, is a drug that can be used, for instance, with uh, antidepressants, um, unlike the classic psychedelic substances. So there's no danger of serotonin syndrome when you use ketamine along with uh, an SSRI or SNRI. Um, and I think I already mentioned uh, that the psychological selection criteria, there's one I haven't mentioned is a current active substance use disorder. Um, you would not consider ketamine. So the client needs to detox and, and achieve a level of abstinence before you would consider ketamine. And it is it can be very useful for uh, maintenance of abstinence. Hope I answered. 
Thank you, Doc. And um, one of the, the other questions was that you mentioned um, people with a personality disorders is not part of that criteria. And then why is that since it's often linked with a childhood trauma? Oh, thank you for that question. Great. Um, yes, what I said is um, very unstable personality disorder. So someone who is chaotic, someone who is unable to maintain any normality of life, uh, which we see quite often in, in, in um, um, drug and alcohol. Um, it's just no point giving ketamine. You can't, you can't access the level of the psyche when, when someone is at that sort of mindset. Um, other personality disorders, absolutely. So personality disorder where uh, someone can still maintain a level of normality in their life, Absolutely. I mean, I, I, again, I'm a, I've got a bit of a heretic view on, on personality disorder. I, 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 I um, view, um, for instance, borderline as someone whose personality development got arrested by some uh, and mainly traumatic event or events and, and, and lack of support when, when they needed to, to, to uh, support their personality development in, in early childhood and, and maybe later. Um, and absolutely, those people will benefit. So I'm not saying all personality disorder. I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is people who are chaotic, decompensated uh, in their personality disorder. Thank you for clarifying. Buying. And then does EEG and then MRI study provide any evidence of um, uh, electoral physiology and functional um, effects of the ketamine? Yes, as I mentioned, there are studies that, 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 that prove that, that yeah. um, uh, it, it changes the electrical activity in the brain and, and, and there are uh, new connections. Uh, in the brain, uh, an activation of, of, of areas of brain that are not normally activated in, um, in, in, in your normal uh, state of mind. Um, so it stirs up the brain and, and creates some new uh, possibilities uh, in the brain to, um, to, for change. And then uh, one last question is, Ketamine somewhat addictive, and um, potentially can't um, you know um, be misused. Yes, ketamine is a drug of addiction, but it's not that level as as alcohol or or, or opioids. So ketamine does not result in ketamine use, even regular ketamine use of a, a physical withdrawal syndrome. It's more a psychological addiction. And I have to say that um, in research studies, it is unheard of that people end up in ketamine addiction. And for the very reason, because they associate ketamine use with a therapeutic setting, which quite often is difficult and uncomfortable, can be nice and pleasant and euphoric as well, but um, but it normally is mixed with difficulty. Um, so it's not used in that recreational setting. Now, it is used in the party scene, um, much more in the UK than in Australia. And um, I, I, I heard uh, lots of stories, um, you know, in, in, from clubs and, uh, and other places where uh, people use ketamine and they might end up with with uh, some bad trips, for instance, on ketamine. Again, because it's an unsupported uh, uh, use of a mind-altering substance, um, which you don't really know how much you take. There's no one there to, to, to prepare you, to support you, um, and then integrate the experience. 